virtual flight rules. Uh, this video is just about a channel update. Um, I am flying this live, so I am not uh, voice doing a voiceover over pre-recorded footage. So if I make a mistake, then feel free to tell me off for it in the comments. But basically, uh, a few things are coming. Uh, X-Plane 10.30 has officially been released, which includes the new airport gateway, which is basically a service which allows the users to create uh, airports, say for their local airport, uh, using X-Plane's default um, buildings and uh, you can submit them and then they will check them over at, at Lamina Research and then in the next update they will probably uh, put them in and then that way they can start populating all the uh, airports around the globe with their uh, buildings, like much like FSX but a hell of a lot more uh, accurate. Uh, at the moment I am flying, I've just departed from Cape Town, um, there will be a video uh, of this soon and a viewer has requested uh, a flight uh, and expect that around Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, so at the time being there's a few updates where I'm running. I am running the new Real Terra Haze which does indeed feature the new low level fog and when you can use it it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, at the moment you can't really see it because there's no fog whatsoever, but it, it really does a good job, and um, especially when you're flying on like a foggy morning in Britain, I've um, found it really useful then. Also, I am running Skymax Pro V2 with Cloud Shadows, as you can see there, and what that also allows me to do is, I think it allows me to control the Cloud Shadow intensity with this. Uh, with real terror haze as well and overall there's, well, there's not many clouds in the sky at the moment but when there is um, I can get some really nice uh, really nice uh, cloudscapes that's quite a nice big mountain there isn't it uh, plugins I'm using as well I'm using the pilot view plugin by Sandy Barber I think it's called and, and um, that allows me to get direct input from track IR instead of X-Plane's processed input, which is quite frankly annoying. So that means I can actually tilt my head, which you couldn't previously do in X-Plane. Another airfield over there. At the moment I am flying the Alabeo PA-38 in the Liverpool Flying School livery. I have flown this, the real version of this plane in reality, this exact one to be exact. And I am running default scenery for X plane, so for this area, th this is all completely default. Um, this hasn't been changed, but I don't want to focus on this too much because uh, that will be an upcoming video. But uh, yeah, as I say, this is just an update. Um, I did promise a review for Skymax V2 and the only reason I've put that off is because there is a few issues with the cloud shadows. Um, the two that I've found are they are way too dark over water um, and that's been also reported by quite a few other users. And the second one being when you are partially in a cloud shadow which means you do have a shadow but it's sort of faded out a little bit. Um, the shadows actually come from the aircraft, they act really weird as you pan the view around on external views and also this affects internally as well because going into a cloud you don't really see uh, the wing darkening you know, as, the, uh, as the shadow of the cloud is meant to be cast over. However when you go in external views you can not actually see that. So I hope that gets fixed soon and I and I will be posting a positive review on that if uh, if that gets fixed ASAP. And like I said, Real Terra Haze, and I'll also be doing a review on that as well. See, at the moment I've just started university, so it's uh, I'm struggling to find time and slots in my schedule to actually make videos. But 
as soon as I get settled down properly, uh, there'll be tons more content to come. Uh, if there's any reviews for any aircraft that you would like to see, also uh, let me know in the comments section below. I know the new 1900D from Coronado is coming out for X-Plane, and let me know what your thoughts are on that. Personally, I don't think it's worth uh, charging a full aircraft price for it, because what they essentially do is they copy the panel from the C uh, Coronado King Air C90B, the B200, and paste it into the other one, and then change a few uh, instruments. Uh, obviously the external model is different, but they already had that from FSX. And then they um, push it out as a, as a new aircraft. And I want to know in the comments, do you think this is is right for them to charge um, full price for an aircraft that's basically been copy and pasted? Or do you think it should be given at a discounted price? Also, if you'd like to see more flights in the PA-38, I'm actually quite familiar with this aircraft, so it's, uh, I really enjoy flying it around everywhere, because it's nice, low and slow, you get about 90 knots usually, uh, and you can really explore with it, like I didn't know these legs were up here. Sorry about the squeaky chair. I think I'll be flying here more often, the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the second aim of this video was to test some new equipment. Uh, I am recording this on NVIDIA Shadowplay, which is a service that comes free with uh, NVIDIA's higher-end graphics cards, which basically allows you to uh, record uh, the screen capture uh, either from DirectX uh, in other games or Windows Desktop, what I'm doing now to record OpenGL, which is x -Plane. Um And... It I see no drop in frame rate when I do that, so I'm currently recording at about 70 FPS, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can probably see the fraps counter in the top left. Uh, and also, the second thing is, I did get a new headset. I got a uh, Sennheiser um, PC363D headset, and the audio quality is absolutely phenomenal from it. Uh, I'm still getting used to positioning the mic to a, a place where it, it sounds good and not oversaturated because it, it's really sensitive which is, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing um, but I, if you think it's any clearer let me know and um, yeah, so this scenery is really really nice poorly coordinated turns there. And also with the uh, influx of new aircraft for X-Plane, um, are they what you would like to see and also what aircraft would you like to see coming to X-Plane? Personally, uh, for me it would be the Coronado's um, SR-22 uh, the Cirrus from FSX. Uh, that was one of the first aircraft that introduced the Garmin G1000 and it really fit that aircraft very well and um, I know to this date there's not been any aircraft released with a, a really good simulation of the Garmin G1000 however I will post a link in the comment to um, the guy who develops Coronado's aircraft for X-Plane he does have a thread um, where he is making his own aircraft, not for Coronado, but it's just for his, his own use. Um, it's the Quest Kodiak, and it's got three Garmin G1000s in it, and it, he's done a really good job of simulating them, so I hope to see those in the next Cor Coronado releases. So it should open up newer opportunities for them to port over some of the uh, aircraft, like the SR-22 and the uh, Phenom. So if you would like to see stuff like that, um, have a discussion about it in the comments, and. I will reply. And if there is there any anywhere you'd like to see uh, flown over, see what the default X-Plane scenery is like, then also let me know in the comments. 
and other than that I think that about covers it for news oh one more thing as well um, the Coronado CT206H I will do a video on that soon I did some panel modifications uh, just texture modifications and I did put a little 3D model on the dash um, so I will show you that soon and it has a little surprise on it and yeah hope you're looking forward to that and yeah that's about it for news so at the moment now I'm just looking for any airport and I think that's the same one over there where I took off from Cape Town that X-Plane does a, a really really good job of all the uh, buildings and the roads at the moment obviously I've never been to Cape Town um, but at the moment what I'm seeing of it, it looks like a really good well it looks really populated and, and really nicely done by X-Plane whether it's actually accurate or not um, you can tell me but I don't know I'll climb up to about 1,500 feet. Just trim those up a little bit there. And I can't see any wind socks. Well, in that case then we will just land at whatever runway that we find. I will do a overhead join and uh, at 1,500 feet and then we will uh, descend into the circuit at about 1,000 feet and do a left hand circuit and come into land at runway 3-4 I think it is if I'm not mistaken. Also, uh, um, let me know in the comments what scenery mod you'd like to see for X-Plane. Um, at the moment, the only one that I personally think X-Plane really needs is a nice water mod um, to fix the horrible mill pond water. It, it works really well for lakes, but for everything else, it's pretty useless. Other than that, I think x does a really good job of everything else. And especially with the amount of freeware that you can get, that makes x look brilliant. Also, I get asked quite a lot. Um, x versus FSX. And it's a very touchy subject. Um, I think personally I am biased towards x because it... I personally think it offers a lot more, but if you would like to see a, as you know, a, a true review, if you know what I mean, because you see a lot of videos online now, and um, the try and review, uh, you know, explain versus FSX, and they load up FSX with tons of mods and tons of airport mods and uh, you know, um, payware aircraft, payware sceneries and um, it, it does blow x out of the water uh, graphically but um, they don't show you FSX stock versus x stock um, because there's a bit of a difference there and if you would like to see how that uh, looks then let me know in the, the comment section below and I will see what I can do to put a video together to um, try and finally settle the debate, possibly, or maybe just make things worse, but <laughs> we'll, we'll find out eventually. Okay, we'll put the fuel pump on now, we'll put the, not the pitot heat, we've got fuel mixture full rich, switch over to the fullest tank, and we'll put the carburetor heat on, 
and just as we are going over the threshold let's just dip the wing over a little coordinate the turn I did pick up the uh, new V-Flight uh, uh, um, PA-28 210 I think it is, the Piper Arrow 3, the low tail version, and if you would like to see a review on that, also let me know in the comments section below. And, as I say, any new aircraft that are coming out, I will try my best to get hold of them and review them. Because I, I do pay for all these with my own money, I don't get um, gifted them by any of the uh, manufacturers, you know. No buildings at Cape Town, uh, the airport. Um, but like I was saying, with the new addition of X-Plane um, Airport Gateway, it should open new possibilities for people to build scenery with the default X-Plane um, buildings. So it only takes a, a very small update, and you can get hundreds of airports in. Um, but again, if you'd like to know how to do that, I will post a link to the. Um, world editor uh, uh, explain blog post in the description and yeah if, if that's something you're interested in to develop scenery for explain it might be beneficial to the whole community if you know an air airport uh, really well or you can develop scenery really well um, to just make basic scenery I have contemplated doing a series on how to fly. Um, I'm by no means a flying instructor, and I by no means have my license either. But if you would like to see uh, training straight from the trainer syllabus, I do have access to it. I do work in a flying school, so it does grant me access to the syllabus, and I do have the flight trainer manuals as well. So if you would like to see uh, flight training and flying lessons, um, you know, obviously virtual, uh, on the channel, then also let me know in the comments section. Um, there's probably plenty of places where you can uh, find find info out about that. But if you would like to see it here as well, then um, here, by all means, let me know. It's such a long downwind. Also in the comments, um, I'd like to know what's your most anticipated aircraft for X-Plane at the moment. Um, what's been announced? Uh, we've had quite a quite a few aircraft, uh, including obviously the Coronado uh, 1900D. Uh, but my two most anticipated aircraft uh, upcoming has to be the. Um, the Flight Factor A350 XWB that looks absolutely absolutely phenomenal, um, and also 
I think this is on everyone's list. It's the IXEG uh, 737 Classic. It, it, it's on par, if not higher, than um, the detail level in a PMDG aircraft. And if you haven't seen that before, do a search for it and um, have a look at that. Uh, you, you will not be disappointed. Even at the present moment, the aircraft looks in a state that it could easily be released um, and they, they, they would make hundreds of it easily. But they are uh, withholding it for a, a small amount of time, um, perfecting a few things. So uh, it should be absolutely brilliant when it gets released. Okay, very short finals here. I'm purposely coming in quite high so that I can touch down a bit further and further down the runway so I don't have to taxi all the way in. Oh, didn't expect that crosswind then. Yep, there you go. And we're down. Okay, light braking as we're coming up to the the brakes on X plane are, are really really odd. I do have the uh, Satec um, Pro Flight rudder pedals, and they're acting really weird. The and I've just spun all the way around because of the crosswind on the tail. Come on, there you go. You can see the turn and slip indicator there is going off its head. Okay, we can turn the fuel pump off to land and light it off. Um, can put the transponder on standby. And we will just park up somewhere on one of these big blank spaces because there's no buildings yet. Ooh, tail's going again, taxiing a little bit fast. And again, yeah, it's probably over the crosswind limit for this aircraft. Okay, we'll go in the corner there and then just spin it round. Yeah, about there. Okay, park and brake is on. We will turn all the avionics off. And cut the power. It's always good practice to as you shut the mixture, uh, put the throttle up full, especially in the older aircraft, because basically what it does is it, it clears all the crap out the engine basically as soon as you um, give it that big burst of throttle and then obviously close it. Um, fuel off, anti collision light off, I didn't realise I still had the carburetor heat on, the key off and usually out the ignition, master switch is off and open the door to get some fresh air. And that just about concludes it for this video. So, yeah, if you want to see more content on the channel and be up to date with it, then don't hesitate to subscribe. And uh, all the links to everything I've been talking about will be in the description below. And anything you need to ask or need help with, uh, just comment in the comment section below as well. And on that note, I will be going and hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. One other thing as well, just forgot to mention. The channel has uh, not long just hit 
uh, 10,000 views so I just want to thank everyone for the commitment watching the videos and the support and the comments and suggestions and everything so big thank you to everyone and also uh, Flight Sim 2014 is coming up at RAF Cosford and if I can be there then I will and if I can't then I apologise uh, I will let you know uh, in the upcoming weeks though so thank you for watching once again and uh, goodbye.